they won't teach you this properly. They will run through this quickly. Straight up detail, this thing is useless for electrical engineering. I don't know why they taught us this. No one's using a Windows computer to program anything. Learn a mainstream high level programming language. It will save your life. Hello everyone. Today I'm gonna to make a video on what's the best skills you can learn. And I'm gonna rank this on the iPad. I'm gonna show you. These are all the skills that I learned throughout my electrical engineering degree. I'm just gonna save you time because there's certain skills that are gonna be absolutely useless. Let's get straight into the video. Number one, we have Arduino. And I will automatically give Arduino an A, and this is because it's this skill that will literally be used in your first, second, third, fourth year. You might even use it in industry to do some prototypes. What it is, is just a small like microcontroller and you can program it and it's fantastic. You learn how to use C slash C++. You learn how to wire stuff. It's just great. Highly recommend everyone to use it. It also has really good um, documentation. I had my robotics project with it. It didn't work as well because I had a really old robot, which we had to transfer a basic board to this one. And it was a bit of chaos, but overall, very good experience. Every electrical engineering student should touch on Arduino. Same thing as a Raspberry Pi, by the way. Uh, next is a breadboard. Breadboard also is solid A tier. You have to know how to use a breadboard in electrical engineering because you need to know how to wire stuff. It, it's the whole application of your circuit theory in action. Please don't sleep on this. All your labs are going to use this skill. Your labs are kind of important, especially in second year. Don't sleep on it. Very important skill. Next, C. C, the language. Very powerful language. Really popular in uh, hardware engineering. I give it a B because it's one of those things where it's really important, but you need to know that you are going to use it in the future. I had a project in C in the first year. I managed to do it. I got a really good grade. I thought I knew the language until I had an interview with Intel and then I looked like a waste man. Let's just say that. <laughs> Next is Design Spark. And I'm gonna put Design Spark in a C tier. It's not a bad, piece of software. What it is, is a PCB design piece of software. It does the job. It's really simple. It's free. So it's not bad, but you're only really going to use it to make PCBs. It's one of those things where you're never really going to use after uni. Your uni might give you a different piece of PCB design software, like Cadence, which would be much better. If this was Cadence, I'll put in a B tier only because it's industry standard. This, I don't think it is, but I might be wrong. Excel. Excel, I sadly need to put in a B tier because it's hella useful. Even though I hate it with a passion, and I remember my lecturer teaching us how to arrange complex numbers and multiply complex numbers and make do Fourier series and Fourier transforms with fucking Excel. I associate it more, more with uh, financial type uh, problems to solve, but I guess it's using engineering. Even in my company now, our test reports are made in Excel. So you can't really run away from it but I can't give it an A or an S tier because it's just such a old and clunky piece of software. Next one, finite element analysis software. We used uh, FEM. I don't know, this is a logo for a different one because my software didn't even have a logo. <laughs> Which is just really sad. Straight up detail, this thing is useless for electrical engineering. I don't know why they taught us this. They use this for teaching us electromagnetism, modeling, like magnets and stuff, which is, I guess, cool, but you don't really, you shouldn't be forcing us to download this piece of software. And I actually got away with it by not touching it. Like I, I would watch it like in the lectures, but I wouldn't actually myself play around with it. It didn't affect me at all. I just strongly suggest you avoid this because you are not uh, aeronautical chemical engineers. I don't even know who you use, but I, I imagine mechanical engineers use this uh, quite a bit. But us electrical engineers, we don't. So don't worry about it. Linux, straight up A tier. You may think I might be a bit biased towards this computer science end of things, but Linux is one of those things where when you actually get a job, you realize that no one's using a Windows computer to program anything. So you either are left with Mac OS or Linux. And Mac OS is just Linux. The conclusion is that you have to learn Linux to be able to go into industry and write software. and even if you go into some theoretical field where you do like communications and you do a lot of practical stuff, you're still going to write test scripts. You're still going to write uh, programs. So you're going to need to know Linux. And 
The problem with Linux is, especially at my uni, is they don't they won't teach you this properly. They will run through this quickly. They taught us in conjunction with C. This was, was one like one semester module. They cramped it all up. They basically told us, look, this is important, but we don't have time to teach you. You should probably do something about that later down your line. Yeah, so strongly recommend when you're learning uh, a programming language to use it in conjunction with like GitLab, GitHub, learn commands on uh, on Bash. You should check it out. MATLAB. MATLAB is a, I'll put it in B tier. It's all right, but it's really, it's a really specific piece of software. It's really expensive. It's just, it's just a massive calculator. That's the best way to portray what MATLAB is. It's still a programming language. It's really good for plotting stuff, um, I guess. You're gonna need to look, use some MATLAB because it's just, it's just MATLAB. Every engineering discipline has to use MATLAB at some point. So I'm sorry guys. Uh, that's why I put it in a B tier because you're, it's un in, Unevitable. The next piece of software is multi-sim and, and I'm gonna put that into A tier. This is a circuit simulator and it's great. And I'm gonna tell you why I put it in A tier and it's because when you're at home and you don't have a 4.7 ohm resistor, that means you're fucked usually. However, you can fire up this piece of software. You can just simulate your circuit as if you had it in real life. It's just great. It saves you a lot of time. In my degree, I used this so much, especially in first year when we had COVID and we couldn't go into labs. So Multisim was fired up on my computer every single day, every other day. And I think it's a good habit because now I'm in the habit that I check every single circuit schematic in a simulator before I do it on a breadboard. And then after a breadboard, I make a PCB schematic. Highly recommend you guys master a uh, circuit simulator. There's also Spice, which is another piece of software. They work on the same basis. I think Multisim is a, a bit easier to learn. But yeah, I highly recommend learn the circuit simulator software they give you at uni. Next, oscilloscope. Oscilloscope is A tier. Electrical engineering. This is the first thing that comes to your mind. You're going to use it all the time in labs. If you don't know how to use an oscilloscope, you're just gonna waste loads of time in labs trying to figure it out instead of actually doing the lab because there'll be a point when they just expect you to know how to use it. Look, I don't know how to use everything in the oscilloscope. They've got like 1 million buttons, but you need to know how to do the simple things. In your first like lessons at uni, you will have like introductory lessons to how to use a proper oscilloscope. Try and not take the piss too much <laughs> because later down in line, you're gonna be like, brah, I actually don't know how to do this. and in six months time, when they actually give you a proper lab where you have to just freestyle your way with an oscilloscope, you're gonna struggle because guess what? That's what I did and I looked like a waste man. <laughs> Next tool is Python. Python is the S tier piece of software. Python is one of those languages where wherever you go, there is a use case for it. Python is really good in engineering when you're using, for example, a Raspberry Pi. That's the main language for a Raspberry Pi. I'm pretty sure it's, a, it's Python. And you can do so much with Python, data science, even machine learning stuff is done on Python. It's pretty incredible how simple yet so effective this programming language is. I never got to learn any Python at uni and I won't. I learned Python in secondary school for my uh, computer science project. And it was the best thing I've ever done that I got to learn Python because now I'm at a point where I'm using this at my company. And you know, when you're 16, you don't really think about this thing that you're learning and how it's actually going to make you money at a certain point. And it now does. And it's guys, Python is the best language in the world. I'm sorry. I might be, might be a bit biased. The JavaScript users might be hating on me a bit, which is understandable because it's also a fantastic language. Learn a mainstream high level programming language. It will save your life. Next is NX Siemens. Put that into S tier. Uh, sorry, S tier. Into C tier. You're not a mechanical engineer. You're not going to be expected to use this in industry. If you're ever going to use this CAD tool, it's going to be for your project to just get something built. I guess it's cool, but it's just not for you. So don't waste too much time learning it. It's not gonna benefit you too much unless you wanna become a more mechanical engineer and that's the case, cool, but that's not me. <laughs> Next is Simulink. And Simulink is a B-tier piece of software. 
What Simulink does, it helps you in control engineering. So control engineering is a course that every single engineering student is going to take, no matter who you are, chemical, mechanical, aerospace, and everyone is gonna use Simulink because control systems are everywhere. You are a control system, a bike's a control system, a car is, everything is. So that's why it's extremely important. And this helps you basically create a schematic for how a system works. You will learn about uh, negative feedback. It's a subfield of electrical engineering. You're going to use it just for this one module and you're gonna use it extensively, but it's gonna be for you to decide whether you're gonna carry on going into that field or profession. If you do robotics, this will also be a big thing. I think all B tier like pieces of software and tools, they're important, but they're extremely important only in specific industries slash modules. So just keep that in mind. Next one is soldering. I'm gonna put soldering in an A tier, only because it's so fun. I don't know anyone who doesn't like soldering. It's just great. Like you feel like you're building Lego. It's not even like such a hard skill to learn and it's just fun and it allows you to build stuff. Soldering is great. Next is a spectrum analyzer. I'll put this in uh, C tier. I'll put this in C tier because this is only used in communications. You're only going to do communications if you do specifically electrical and electronic engineering degrees. If you do any other like subfield, like computer engineering or robotics engineering, you're pro most likely not going to touch this. That's why I put it in C tier. The spectrum analyzer is a fantastic tool. It looks like an oscilloscope, but what it does is it plots the frequency domain of stuff. It basically plots the Fourier series and transform. The last one is VHDL. I'm gonna put VHDL in B tier. Fuck. Okay, the last one is VHDL. And I'm gonna put VHDL in B tier. I love VHDL in my electronics module. It's a hardware description language, which looks like a programming language. It basically maps signals to the logic gates in your circuit and makes everything just work well. If you ever want to work for Intel, for AMD, for Xilinx, you have to learn VHDL. No one knows it. No one knows what this is. And you're like this, this magician if you know how to use it. You're going to be really useful to the world if you know VHDL. That's what I'm trying to say here. I think that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this is useful. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next week for another video.